Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Stacey Van Dyke. New for you here at 4 NDSU has just selected its new president. Dr. David Cook will take the helm at the university in July. He currently serves as a vice chancellor at the University of Kansas. The State Board of Higher Education conducted final interviews this morning before making the announcement. The case is now in the jury's hands in the federal trial of three former Minneapolis officers charged with depriving George Floyd of constitutional rights. Deliberations began this morning. J. Alexander King, Thomas Lane and Tutau all face a federal charge accusing them of willfully depriving George Floyd of his constitutional rights and being deliberately indifferent while acting under color of law. Prosecutors said they chose to do nothing. Defense attorneys countered that the officers were too inexperienced, weren't trained properly, and did not willfully violate Floyd's rights. A verdict is expected any time now. Well, finally, we're seeing some sunshine, but as Hutch tells us, we're still in the deep freeze. He's here now with the first look. Hutch? Stacy, thanks so much, and uh, good evening, everyone. As we head into the nighttime hours, it's been a cold day. Many of us staying below zero, and it just looks cold out at the Dakota Magic Casino with the Southern Valley getting a blanket of blizzard-fed snow. Now the wind taking a break. The sky is pretty clear. We do have concerns about wind chills tonight. A wind chill warning up north Devil's Lake Basin in the northwest Minnesota. The rest of us in the light blue shade there in a wind chill advisory. Here is the latest. Temperatures are below zero for many on the north side of the black line. On the other side, we're zero or just a pinch above it. Factor in the winds that are generally around 10 miles per hour. And it feels like 10 to 25 below zero with the most nasty wind chills up in that Devil's Lake Basin. All of us will continue to be cold and in fact with a lot less wind tonight than last night. It's going to be even colder and check this out. Kind of fun at looking at our snow banks from space, but all this white on the ground that's not moving with the darkened earth. That is the snow, so there is a lot of it over North Dakota and here along the Mississippi, or excuse me, Minnesota River and here you can see the trees of Minnesota. There's plenty of snow there as well. That's going to help keep us pretty chilly. Here is a look at your planning forecast for tonight. 10 to 15 below already as we head into the nighttime hours with wind chills 25 to 35 below in Fargo, even colder up north. We'll have hour by hour details on this and some warmer weather to talk about. Stacy and no first alert weather days or blizzards, at least in the current seven day planner. We'll have details in a moment. Hey, some good news there. Thanks, Hutch. You bet. Walsh County authorities are trying to identify human remains found in a burned out car. The sheriff's department says the body was found last Friday just north of Minto. They say deputies were able to identify who owns the vehicle, but they're not releasing that information. UND is conducting the autopsy. Authorities are conducting another autopsy on a man found dead in Kidder County. News Dakota is reporting 56 year old Timothy Becker of Robinson was found dead on Monday. His body was found on a back road by Highway 36. No other details are available at this time. Three people are facing potential charges after a drug raid in West Central Minnesota. The Sheriff's Department says it found cocaine, meth, marijuana, THC cartridges, fentanyl and a gun when it raided a home in Wilmar Monday. Authorities haven't released the names of those arrested. Police are investigating reports of shots fired in South Moorhead. They were called around 9 last night to the 500 block of 30th Avenue. Officers detained several people for questioning, but no arrests were made. Police say no one was hurt and they don't believe that there's a threat to the public. The drumbeat of war is getting louder in Europe with Russian forces poised to launch an all-out offensive on Ukraine. President Biden is taking steps to punish Russia's economy as Ukraine announced a state of emergency and is mobilizing its National Guard in response to the threat from Russia. The U.S. says Russia continues to send forces into rebel-held areas of eastern Ukraine and satellite images show the Russian buildup along Ukraine's borders growing, including field hospitals being set up. Russia's moved supplies of blood and medical equipment into position on their border. You don't need blood unless you plan on starting a war. President Biden announced the first set of sanctions against Russia, targeting two large Russian banks with ties to the military and cutting off the country from Western financing. President Biden warned that the sanctions against Russia will have an impact on Americans, especially at the gas pump. Now in Minnesota, that impact is already being felt in energy and fuel prices. Jeff Wagner spoke with local experts on how this international conflict could affect us here at home. It started at the gas pump with prices ticking up and has continued on to Wall Street, where the stock market went down. 
Both are part of the first wave of ripples from the escalating tension in Ukraine, with potentially more waves to follow as Russian troops make their way into the eastern part of the country. And this is just going to add to the uncertainty. Timothy Kehoe is an economics professor at the University of Minnesota. Do you anticipate that this will make inflation just worse uh, or, or, or like has the potential to at least become worse? Yes, it does have, have the potential. That means paying even more to fill up your car or shop at the grocery store. Russia and Ukraine are large agricultural exporters to Europe and Asia. Any disruption could drive global food prices higher, even in the U.S. Russia is also a leading producer of critical metals connected to computer chips, meaning cars and electronics could further surge in price. Kehoe says a full-scale war would make it worse. If Europe is uh, uh, embroiled in a big mess with uh, uh, millions of refugees and violence and disruption of trade, that's going to have an effect on the world economy. Minnesota doesn't have the strongest trade relationship with the two countries. When it comes to exports, Russia ranks 39th and Ukraine 52nd. But there are several Minnesota companies with business in Ukraine, including Toro, 3M, Cargill, and ADM. Nobody really discusses what do you do about war with your assets, with your plant, property, equipment, and your people. Paul Voller is an international business and law professor at the U. He says ensuring the staff in Ukraine are safe is a priority, which could mean evacuating employees along the Russian border to other parts of the country. He compared it to U.S. businesses on the East Coast preparing for a major hurricane. So what we do is we batten down the hatches and, and essentially stop all business and stock up. That's what's going on right now. All of this is coming at a time when the U.S. economy and much of the world is trying to rebuild amid the pandemic. Jeff Wagner. This Ukrainian um, uh, situation could throw a big wrench into that. WCCO 4 News. Most Americans oppose the U.S. playing a role in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. According to a new AP poll, it found just 26 percent say the U.S. should play a major role and 52 percent want a minor role. 20 percent say none at all. Meanwhile, 44 percent of Americans say they approve of President Biden's handling of the U.S.'s relationship with Russia, including 81 percent of Democrats and 18 percent of Republicans. That poll was conducted Friday through Monday. In Paris, the city hall is lit up in support of a free and sovereign Sovereign Ukraine. The Brandenburg Gate in Germany's capital city also lit up to support Ukraine. The Berlin mayor expressed solidarity with the Ukrainian people. He noted that residents in support of either Russia or Ukraine are hoping for a peaceful outcome. State TV is reporting that Iran has returned 820,000 COVID vaccines donated by Poland because they were manufactured in the U.S. They quoted an official in the country's health ministry as saying Poland donated about a million doses of British Sweden's AstraZeneca vaccine to Iran, but officials determined 820,000 of them were manufactured in the U.S. It was decided that those vaccine doses would be returned. With more than 135,000 total deaths from COVID-19, according to official numbers, Iran has the highest national death toll in the Middle East. Iran has relied on a state-backed Chinese vaccine, but offers citizens other shots. Today, a group of U.S. truckers left California on their way to Washington, D.C. to protest COVID restrictions, similar to the protests in Canada. We have to stand up for our rights. We're supposed to be the most freest country in the world, and we're being restricted they're taking away everything from us one at a time, and it has to stop. The group intends to arrive in Washington next week ahead of the State of the Union address. D.C. leaders are calling in hundreds of unarmed National Guard troops as a precaution they say meant to keep peace. The Minnesota Department of Health has created a new resource to combat the concerning number of drug overdoses in the state. A website, knowthedangers.com, has a digital map of where Narcan can be found in your community. That's a potentially life-saving medication for individuals in an opioid overdose emergency. Administering the drug can reverse the effects of an overdose and save a life. North Dakota Game and Fish has completed their testing for chronic wasting disease in deer populations. The department reports that 26 deer tested positive during the 2021 hunting season. CWD is a fatal disease of deer, moose, and elk that can cause long-term population declines as infection rates climb. Infection rates in the state range from 3% to almost 7%, depending on location.
A big thanks to everyone who donated airline miles. More than 419,000 miles were donated yesterday. That's enough for two families of four to go on a Make-A-Wish trip. Valley News Live is proud to have teamed up with Make-A-Wish North Dakota for its Wishes in Flight Miles to Smiles Drive. Well, yesterday was the big push. Anyone can donate miles any time of year. We have the link to do that right on our website, valleynewslive.com. Just click on this story.